Well, 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 we are a mere nine days into 2019, and already we've had a bunch of Nintendo Switch-related stuff. Crazy stuff is going on. Now, many people are expecting there to be a Nintendo Direct in the month of January, myself included, but now people are thinking, maybe not. We talked about this on a video yesterday, basically going over how Nintendo announced a bunch of release dates for things, such as Yoshi's Crafted World, that would have made sense to announce during a Nintendo Direct presentation. They also talked about what games will be coming to Nintendo's online service, and that's going going over really well on YouTube right now, but still, a lot of people are sort of on the fence. Is there going to be more information? Is there going to be a Nintendo Direct? I still think there will be, but now we have more information coming out. Now we have another big rumor that's circulating on the internet that the Nintendo Switch revision is coming in 2019. Now, of course, we have talked about things like a Nintendo Switch revision coming in 2019 on the channel before, but now it looks like an industry insider is talking about this. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's the source of this rumor, though? Oh, it's industry analyst Michael Pactor because he's always right about things, right? So let's talk about Michael Pactor. Let's talk about his history. Let's talk about why I don't really care for him and he has me blocked on Twitter because maybe I said some mean things about him. And of course, let's talk about this Nintendo Switch rumor. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about why there might be a handheld-only Nintendo Switch dropping in 2019. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards. So in case you're unfamiliar with who Michael Pactor is, he's basically an industry insider who makes a lot of predictions on the video game industry. Occasionally he is correct about things, but most of the time he's kind of off base, I feel. And Michael Pactor and I actually do have a little bit of a history. When Mr. Awada passed away from Nintendo, Pactor actually said some pretty disrespectful things I felt at the time about Awada and his passing, and I might have made a video on it, and I may have said a few, a few choice words about the man. Well, Mr. Pactor was talking about Sataru Iwata and referred to him as the late and not so great Sataru Iwata. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? What the fuck? Okay, I expect that comment from a 12 year old YouTuber who's doing a vlog on his pre installed webcam on his computer with the username uh, 420smoker69, fuck your mom. Like, that's just the most childish thing to say. That's the most ridiculous thing to say about someone who did a bunch of great things for the video game industry. And he may have blocked me on Twitter. and things like that. But at the end of the day, like, you know, it was just his opinion on Mr. Awada and his passing. I felt his opinion was wrong and I felt that he should not have said what he said. But at the end of the day, I can still respect what he does. And you know, he's made a name for himself in the video game industry. Whether you agree with the guy or disagree with the guy, he has made a name for himself. He does this for a living. So you have to give him at least a little bit of credit. But Pactor recently was interviewed and was talking about video game consoles in 2019. And he had some very interesting things to say about the Nintendo Switch. Now, of course, the Wall Street Journal reported last year that a Nintendo Switch revision was incoming. And we're going to talk about my thoughts, you know, sort of how I've gone over these Nintendo Switch revisions as the information has came out. But first, I want to talk about what Pactor says and basically go over his interview. So in an interview with GamingBolt.com, which I'll have a link to in the description box down below, Pactor was asked if you would see continued success for system sales in 2019, to which he answered, yeah, I do. I think we'll probably get a price cut on all of them, and Nintendo may position it as a reinvented Switch. My guess is that Nintendo will take the Switch and get rid of the Switch part, as it'll be handheld only. They'll probably just make the Joy-Cons part of the integrated body of the tablet, and probably drop the price, get rid of the docking station, and the external power supply. Just turn the thing into a handheld that's rechargeable with a power cord, you know, like a normal handheld, and charge $200 for it. So they do that, Sony can probably cut the price, Microsoft probably will cut the price. You'll probably get a $199 Xbox and a $249 PlayStation, and a $199 Switch that's handheld only. That'll probably be enough to drive demand up until to keep it constant year over year. Honestly, there are some things that I agree with in what Michael Pactor said, which 
it sort of pains me to say it, but you know, call a spade a spade, give credit where credit is due. I definitely do think you'll see a price drop on the PS4 and the Xbox One in 2019, but like anyone could have predicted that. You know, any like that would be like me saying, oh, PS4 and Xbox One sales are going to start to slow down in 2019. Like, yeah, they probably will because these systems are on the tail end of their life cycle. Of course, the PlayStation 4 has been selling really well, but the Xbox One, not so much. So to say something like, yeah, it's going to be slower sales for the PS4 and the Xbox One in 2019, so they'll probably do a price cut, doesn't really scream industry insider to me. It sort of screams common sense. Now, on the fact of the matter at hand, which is basically the Nintendo Switch handheld. Now, this is something that I have sort of theorized about myself personally. And you know that when the Nintendo Switch revision was first announced by the Wall Street Journal, there was really sort of three trains of thought going into this. There was the thought that it would be a Nintendo Switch Mini, a handheld only system, which I was sort of on board with. There's also the rumors of a Nintendo Switch Pro that would be something beefier, something that would more than likely still play the same library of games. There were some rumors that there would be games designed for the Nintendo Switch Pro only. I think that's a bunch of hogwash. I think you'll see things if the Nintendo Switch Pro is a reality. I think you would see things like 720p in handheld mode across the board and you would have more power in handheld mode and the ability to have more power in the system in general. And then there's the third train of thought where people are basically saying, well, it's going to be a revision, but it's not going to be something that will be very noticeable. And, you know, it could be any of those three things. But initially, I was on board with the Nintendo Switch Mini thought because I felt like the Nintendo Switch priced at $300 in 2019 and beyond, where things like the PS4 and the Xbox One will start dipping in price, and you have the PS5 and the Xbox Two, or whatever the hell they're going to call it, looming on the horizon, sort of made sense. And then on the topic of a Nintendo Switch Pro, we of course were talking about that during the SNK presentation, where allegedly a Nintendo Switch Pro model was announced as going to be a thing, and there would be a game that would be enhanced by Nintendo Switch Pro's system capabilities done by SNK. Now, it does look like that may have been a translation error, so I could have been completely off base with that. I actually had Spawnwave talk to me after that video went up, and he's like, I think there was a translation issue with the game. You haven't really heard anything about that since that event, and no one's really come out and said anything about it. So if I was wrong on that, you know, I was wrong on that. I'm man enough to admit when I'm wrong about something. I definitely don't want to lead you guys astray. It was just based on the research that I had done and all the information I had seen, but it looked like that research may have been incorrect. So I do apologize for that, but I'm not perfect. You know, I make mistakes. Sometimes I leave mistakes in the video by accident. Sorry about that. Like, look at that Saturn documentary I did. I, I did so good on that. I put so much time and effort into that, and I said Silicon Knights instead of Silicon Graphics, and I felt like such a jackass. But yes, all because Michael Pachter is saying this, a lot of people are starting to run with this story as gospel, that the Nintendo Switch will see a handheld revision only in 2019. Now, I have said that I thought initially this would make the most sense, and maybe it would, but then you also have to think of the other side of that. It would sort of limit some of the games you could play. One of the big deals about the Nintendo Switch is, of course, the ability to play two players wherever you go. And the baseline Nintendo Switch model, of course, is a handheld model. Would they increase the battery life of the Nintendo Switch Mini or this handheld Nintendo Switch? They would obviously have to do some revisions to it. Yes, not having a dock and an AC adapter in the box would definitely lower costs. By having the Joy-Cons become undetachable, because these Joy-Cons have a lot of technology and they're very expensive. By having the Joy-Cons be undetachable, you know, that would definitely lower price costs too. They just integrated it into the system. But then you would take away some of the form factor of the system. You would take away some of the abilities. Games like Super Mario Party would not be able to be played on a standard Nintendo Switch handheld unit. You would have to have additional Joy-Cons for that as well. So would Nintendo want to potentially cannibalize game sales with this model? Would the end justify the means with this product? I honestly think it would not be too big of a deal, but it would definitely be something that a lot of developers would have to know in advance and know about going forward. So at the end of the day, is the Nintendo Switch getting a revision in 2019? I think a lot of people are expecting at least something to be announced. Will a Nintendo Switch handheld only model come out in 2019? I don't know. Like that just seems way too early for me. I think you can talk about it and potentially release it in the holiday season, but the way Nintendo Switch sales have been going, the fact that supposedly during the NPD for December, the Nintendo Switch outsold the PS4 and the Xbox One combined in the month of December just shows that the Nintendo Switch is still on a roll. And would you really want to potentially cannibalize sales by introducing a new SKU to the market that only some games would be able to be played on? Well, most games, but there would be some exceptions to that rule. 
I don't know. It's going to be a very interesting few months. But as far as taking Pactor's word as gospel, please don't. This man has been wrong about a lot of things before, just like anyone has. But still, to sort of say that you're an industry insider and you have all this information and to be wrong so many damn times, it's just not a good look. But let me know in the comments section down below how you feel about this. Are you Team Nintendo Switch Pro or are you Team Nintendo Switch handheld only? Because it looks like it could be a handheld only model. And as always, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications and as always guys i will catch you on the next video later well you know what mr pactor you're a son of a bitch you're a motherfucker and you're a piece of shit